This video is sponsored by Brush Galaxy. Okay, welcome to another iPad painting tutorial. On today's tutorial, I'm gonna paint a sunset sea scene. So it's gonna be mainly about the sky and some reflection, a little bit of land, but still, it's gonna be mainly about the sky and the sea. Now I've opened an A4 canvas within Procreate and that's an app on the iPad. I'm using an iPad Pro, but if you have any of the recent iPads, then the app and also all of the functions that I'm showing you today will work. So if you want to use the exact colors that I'm gonna be using in this tutorial, there is a link down in this video description that takes you to my Patreon page and you can download the colors there for free. Also down in the description of this video that are the hexadecimal codes. So all you need to do within the colors section within Procreate, go to the value part. There's a section here called hexadecimal. Type in the codes that I put in the description one at a time and press enter. Each time you do that, a color will appear up here and then you just tap it into create your own color palette. That way you'll be using the exact same colors because sometimes the camera that I use changes the saturation. So at least if you use the exact colors that I provide, you'll know that you are using the same colors. In terms of the brushes I'm going to be using within the elements, I'm gonna use the clouds just to help us a little bit with some of the textures. But then aside from that, I'm going to be using the airbrushing, soft brush within airbrushing, maybe the medium brush, and that's probably about it. So like I say, I'm using Procreate. I've got an A4 canvas. So the first thing we're going to do on layer one is we're gonna to go to our brushes. We're going to use the soft brush. I'm gonna use the first color. In fact, we're gonna use the first three colors for this first layer. So we use the first color. We're gonna put the brush at about 15% and 100% opacity. And really simply, we're just going to extend that color so it's a nice chunk at the top. So about there. We're then gonna to go to our second color. And just so it slightly overlaps, we're just going to use that in the next section. Similar thickness. Then we're just gonna do the same with this third color. Like this. We're then gonna to go to our adjustments, Gaussian blur. We want to affect the whole layer. And then we're going to slide it across just merging those colors together until we get a nice blend. If you take it to 100%, you lose the distinction between those different color bands. So we don't wanna take it anything close to that far. So about 50% is probably looking about right. You've got a really nice transition now from the dark blue to a softer gray color and then a warmer color at the bottom. Now looking at it, I think perhaps I want to increase the drama and the impact. I can easily do that. I can just slide the layer and duplicate it. And some of the really well saturated colors, the dark blues at the top don't really change, but what it has done is really ramped up the warm colors at the bottom. So I'm actually happier with that. It's always a useful thing to try. If you kind of feel like you're heading towards the right effects, but it's not saturated enough, it's not deep enough, just duplicate the layer and see what impact it has. Now you can pinch the layers together like that. It is a little bit awkward. We'll go back to the layer. And if you're having trouble doing that, then what you can do is just tap on the layer. And as long as the layer is underneath that you want to merge it with, you can just do the merge down. Otherwise, it's just really quite fiddly to try and pinch them together like that. Okay, we are going to create another layer. We're gonna go back to our colors. We've used the first three, but we want this color here and probably the next one, but we want to use them in a much smaller reduced capacity compared to the other bands. So we use the fourth color. Again, on the soft brush though, but we just want to reduce it down to about 6%. And we're aiming for where roughly we want the horizon line. It doesn't have to be a straight line. Hold it and it will snap to a straight line. It isn't an issue. Then we can do the same again. We can go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, affect that layer and just blend it in a bit more. So you can see without blurring it, if you blur it in too much, it's just gonna diffuse and disappear. So again, we want to perhaps keep it lower down. So somewhere around the 35% looks about right. So now that we've got this overall effect and we've just over two layers to create that, we're going to create another layer and we're probably going to put in the point where the horizon line is. So we're going to use a really dark color for this. We're gonna use this black. I'm gonna to go to my medium brush. I'm gonna have it around the 2% and just a little bit less than 100% opacity. So about 90%. 
and I'm just going to decide to have some slight raised bits of land. I'm allowing it to retain that kind of wobble perhaps and then when I get to a certain point perhaps it jumps back in distance and then we're a bit lower down like this. Once we've done that we can just create another line that should cut across and give us an absolute horizon. If I hold it still we should be able to create that as it cuts across. Then we can just drag that colour, scale it back if it does too much. I'll run through that again. So if you drag the colour from the colour circle at the top and you land it in there then you, if you don't let go then you can slide it forward and you can slide it back until you find the right colour fill. So we'll zoom in, fill that area as well, push it that way. Any last details can just be done manually obviously. In terms of the top edge of that, I'm not going to leave it as it is. I'm going to go to my smudge tool, set it again to the medium brush. I'm going to put it quite low at around the 1% size. And I'm also going to turn the brush opacity to about 50%. And I might as well do this little detail now. I'm just going to nudge it up, just create a texture. You can probably hear what I'm doing with the brush, or the pencil rather. I'm just allowing it to create some features that stick up a little bit and create an uneven surface, just so it, it takes away from that neat brush edge. So you can imagine trees and rocks and any other features that may be on that piece of land. It's only a subtle detail, but I think it's important to do. So we'll do that all the way across, but what we probably won't do is anything for this section because it's taller and bigger in this section. It probably really is going to show us that this is now a, a further distant area. This is not something you need to be too precious about. Just don't go too far because it's going to look a bit strange. Just keep it small, little nudges, just to nibble away at that edge just to make it look a little bit more organic. I'm sorry if my voice sounds a bit funny still. I didn't produce a video last week because I've had a bit of a cold. So I'm almost back to normal now, but it's still affecting my voice I'm afraid. Just a little bit. Hopefully next week we'll be back to relatively normal. Now I'm only using Procreate brushes here, just the standard free brushes that come with the app. But if you wanted to experiment with different kinds of brushes, then you might want to check out Brush Galaxy. It's a brilliant brush subscription website service with over 20,000 premium Procreate brushes. You can save over 90% of the cost by subscribing and paying monthly. And it's got tons of different categories such as portrait, pattern, texture, nature, and loads more. So if you head over there now, get your first month's free, get instant access to 12 brush packs worth over $300. The links are in the video description and the comments. Okay, so I've just nearly finished all the texture along the top there. Like I say, I'm not going to do any on that section. I think it doesn't need it. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna tap onto layer two and then click the plus symbol. So it creates a layer, but it's still going to be below the layer that we've just created up there. So it's above the other sky elements, but it's below that land feature. I'm gonna to go to my brushes, the soft brush, I'm gonna have it at around 10% size, but low on the opacity is about 5%. And I'm just going to use this red color, which is the sixth color in, and I'm just going to use it to introduce some real warm red tones into this area. have it disappearing as it goes further over there but this area especially needs to be really focused and red click backwards and forwards between this red color and this brown color and we can just start to blend them together more of this brown color perhaps over on this side rather than that strong saturated red and then Obviously it mixes and diffuses with this red color over at this side. So again, it's really low, it's only 5%. So we're allowing it to be quite subtle really, something like this. Okay, I'm gonna go back to our layers, create another layer, back to the colors, use this yellow Put it at around 10% size, keep it at the 5% opacity, still on the soft brush. We're gonna aim for where we want the sun. So I'm probably going to put it around there. Create a few taps, build it up gradually. Where do you want it to be? 
It's on a brand new layer, so it won't affect anything else. Perhaps a little bit lower, in fact. Somewhere like this. I'm just going to blur that in. So again, I'm very reliant upon the Gaussian Blur. It's such a great feature within digital. Just helps soften things in when you need to. So somewhere around the 40%. It's just created a hint of that yellow there. Then we'll create another layer. Then we'll go to this yellow again. But we're going to change brushes now. So we're going to go to the medium brush. We'll put it at around 5% size and 100% opacity. And then we're just going to pick out where we want the sun to be. Just tap it a few times for where we want it. Zoom in if you need to, just to get that precision. Then we can go to the adjustments, go to the bloom setting and the layer properties and just turn it up, do it to 100%. But we can further increase that. So we can create another layer, go to the colors, go to the next color, reduce the size of that to 4% and go for the very center of that now. It's on 100% opacity. We're just going to go keep tapping into the center area, like so. Again, go to the adjustments, the bloom, the layer, turn that up, and we've got a really dramatic feature there. Let's blend them together. So tap, merge down, pinch them together. We may as well create the next layer and merge it together as well. So we'll go merge down again. Just helps keep all of the layer a bit little less complex, a little less cluttered. We go to the layer underneath it, then click the plus symbol. And now we've got a layer that goes underneath the sun, but it's in front of this red layer. Back to our colors, use this yellow, go to the soft brush, put it at around 15%, only at 5% opacity still, and just tap it in, nudge it the area towards this yellow. So it's merging with the red and the other colors, and creating more of an orange perhaps. I'm just gonna go back to the red layer and back to this red color. And I think if I reduce the size of that brush to about 10%, put it up to about 10% strength as well. I think I want to start increasing the drama of the red in this area too. I think this is starting to pull together now as an effect, much better. Now we'll stay on this layer six because it's underneath the sun feature, but I do think that we've got a lot of yellow and orange and then suddenly a very bright sun. I think we need some kind of diffused element behind that sun just to help merge it together a little bit. That layer six isn't quite doing it. So we'll go to the colors. We'll select this color, not the white, the next one in soft brush at around the 10% size and the 10% opacity. I'm just going to tap it a few times. I think that actually does help. Just softens it together just a bit more. So we go to the sun layer and we'll create another layer on top of that. And we're gonna create some more features in the sky. So that's what these colors are predominantly here for. So we've used all the top layer. We're now going to use this second layer of colors. So go for the first color and it is a very light color. I'm gonna to go to my elements and clouds brush. Now I'm not going to amend it in any way, shape or form. I'm going to use it pretty much as it is. So I do quite like to do the textures and stuff myself, but sometimes it's actually quite useful to use these brushes. So I'm just going to put it at around 15% size and 30% opacity. And I'm just going to creep some of these textures in at the corner. So especially when you get texture, cloud texture that comes very close to you, then you'll get more of this, if I zoom in, little broken textures just like this, which can take quite a long time with a more manual approach and brush. So we're just saving ourselves a little bit of time doing it this way. So we'll turn it down now to about 5%, just to fine tune some extra little breakaway features here. And that will do for that brush, for that area. We may come back to it, but I'm going to switch to airbrushing again and soft brush. I'm going to switch to this next color and I'm going to put the size of the brush to about 3% and keep it about 10% opacity. And I'm just going to start bringing in some sweeping, slightly more distant features of the clouds. And I may alternate backwards and forwards between that clouds brush and this 
soft brush. I just want to bring some features in all the way across. Perhaps we'll even turn the size of the brush down to about 2%. Just with a tapping motion, I want to bring some of these features all the way across. So I'm not doing it as long gestures, keeping it quite broken and quite fragmented really. All the way across. In kind of bands really of clouds, so have some sections where it clumps together and creates a band and cuts across. So maybe as it transitions between the really close features and the other more distant, we can go back to the elements, back to the clouds brush. Maybe it's around the 5% size, perhaps just here where it goes between that section and that section, we can just have a bit more of this texture in there as well, in addition to the soft brush. Maybe just use a mixture of the two. So we can use different ways with this brush and slightly circular motions there, as well as the dashes that I was using with the soft brush as well. Go back to my colors. There's a color that's on the bottom layer that I think I'd quite like to start bringing in here as well. It's just a slightly warmer color. I think we're getting a little bit too bright still with this cloud. So I'm gonna use a combination of that bright color and this middle color at the bottom layer, especially as it comes down into this area. So I can add some more cloud features here. I'm gonna swap brush again. I'm gonna go back to the airbrushing and soft brush. It's still got the same settings, the 2% size and the 10% opacity. And I'm gonna use this again, this middle orange color at the bottom layer, just to bring some fragmented hints of texture here, cloud at the bottom. Maybe it could streak across here a little bit, just lightly allowing it to do that. I might use some more intense yellow because as clouds come around here, perhaps it's going to pick up some of that bright sunlight as well. So I just allowed some features to drift, merge together. Maybe add some more of this up into this section. I can always go back over it with the lighter color. So I'll just block it in a little bit. It's on the lower opacity, only 10%. So I can build this up in textures and layers and really do it quite gradually. and just run th some of this color throughout this whole area in fact, because again, we can go back over with the highlights and just pick out some of the lighter bits that we want. So let's do that again. We'll go back in with this color. We've got the brighter color that we'll use again, but we'll go for this second color and just start to build up some of the brightness again. I'm still on the soft brush. I'm not really going to go back to the clouds texture. Useful perhaps in some areas, but I tend to revert back to the, the soft brushes. It means that I can control things a bit more manually. I tend to prefer that. But like I said earlier, if you want to experiment with different brushes, then do go for that. So whatever works for you really.
So I'm just allowing some little broken textures here. You can see how I've created some real sweeping lines that cut across. Lots of broken little segments, but I allow them to clump together into bigger shapes as well. <clears throat> now I'm going to go to the brighter colour, which again was this first colour on the middle row. I'm not changing layer, it's all been done on one layer this. If you want to try it on different layers then go for it, but I'm just trying to simplify things a little bit, we're not too many layers, let's see how we go. So I'm just in this area now going to pick up some highlights, some really light areas in this bit. So I'm going to go back to the layers, create another layer, and I'm going to experiment with some really close contrasting clouds as well. So I'm going to use these two colors now. So we've got this, well, it's almost like a plum color really. It's within the red, but it's a hint towards the pink, but it is quite a dark version of it. So I'm going to go to the clouds brush again with this third color on the middle row, put it up to about 12% size and about 70% opacity. And I'm just going to start tapping in some cloud features. In fact, let's increase the size to about 15% and about 80% opacity. I'm just tapping in some more localized bunches of texture. Something like this. And I'm going to reduce it down to about 10%. Maybe do some slightly more distant clusters of texture here, reduce it down a little bit more to about 8% and maybe something in this area too. Okay, so we're going to change colour to the darker colour now at the very end and then with this slightly smaller size of 8% I'm just going to introduce some of these dark elements to this texture as well. So it's almost like we've got a shadow being created because we've got a strong sun. So there's some bits of the cloud that are going to be creating shadow, but then it also is picking on some areas and creating highlights out of it. And likewise with these ones, we can just use a mixture of the dark and the light together there. I'm going to reduce the size of it down to 5% and just start to have a little bit more control over this particular area. Perhaps turn the opacity down, in fact, to about 50% for this bit. Now, clouds are pretty difficult. And if you're having trouble by following along with this, then just know I do plenty of clouds tutorials and it is about a matter of practicing with a variety of different ones. It's not something you're going to get straight away first time necessarily. It is something that takes practice. And every time, in all honesty, I'm attempting a sky or a set of clouds, then sometimes they don't always go perfect first time. You have to work at them. It's something that can take on a life of its own. Unless you have just one way of doing a sky all the time, which I think is boring, then you're trying to create something unique each, each time, then, you know, it kind of, it can run away from you sometimes but be prepared to stick at it, come back to it, try it again another time. Erase bits if they're not working. Again, that's the beauty of working digitally. You're not stuck with anything at all. So I'm going to switch back to my airbrush, soft brush. Again, it's on the 2% size and the 10% opacity. So I can work in now more sp specifically in a slightly more controlled way than the clouds brush. Perhaps I'm going to turn it stronger to about 20%. And I can just really add a bit more sharpness to some of these textures. Be more exacting about where I want them to be in the exact shape. Maybe a flattening out at the bottom of these distant ones at the bottom section of them. Zoom in a little bit. 
a few more dark blobs into these shadow areas. I'm going to even increase the opacity to 30%. It's quite strong really that, but I feel that it's useful when you're adding shadow and dark bits actually to have a slightly stronger opacity. Highlights don't require quite as much, but sometimes shadows do. So I'm on that layer with the cloud texture. I think it's a little bit too sharp, so I'm going to go to the Gaussian Blur and I'm going to go to the layer properties and only blur it in just a hint. So without blurring at all, I think blurring it about 3% just softens it enough and I think that it helps it work a little bit better. And I can go back in with the Gaussian Blur again, just sharpen up some bits. Go back to the warmer colour, perhaps just use it to bring in highlights in a slightly more controlled way this time, put them more where I want them to be. I'm just going to go back to the layer 7 that had all those highlights on, I'm going to use a combination of some of the brighter colours. So I'm going for the orange colour first, I want to help bring in some of those light features in the background. Now I've got all of my textures working, I just want to go back in and just fine tune some of the things that we've already got, just soften them together. So a bit more of this warm colour, perhaps I'll turn the size up to about 4%, 3% actually. Bring some of this warmness across, I think it will work better. Soften in some of these features even. Also back to this bright colour, turn the opacity or rather the size down to 2 again. As we come over to this section, just use it to pick up some of those bright colours tentatively. In fact, we'll go to the yellow colour. Um, we'll do what we said before and just use it to pick out one or two with a small 2% size. Just one or two of the yellow streaks that perhaps are getting very close to the sun there. Not too many though. Again, back to the other colours. You can see it's quite a gradual process. Building up a sky and textures is not something that happens easily or straight away. It's something you have to keep building upon. So if this is the first sky that you've attempted with me, don't be disheartened if it doesn't go 100%. If you've learned anything from following along, then you can apply it when you do some more skies in the future. This is one of the more complicated skies that I've done, so don't be disheartened. If you find this one isn't working for you, then check through my other tutorials as well. You might just find one a little bit easier on another one. So I'm going to increase the size to 4% opacity. Just maybe create some underpinnings here of brightness, just so you can really show off the shadowed bits there. Create a contrast. Okay, so I'm going to leave the sky as it is. I will, in fact, go to my, I'll go to the add symbol rather, copy canvas, then go to it again, paste, and now on the top, in fact, if we put it on the top, I've got a layer that is the entire picture. Now, I can't really show you that, but you can see in the top there, we've got a thumbnail of everything that's displayed on that canvas on one layer, which is really useful if you want to create something like a reflection. Okay, so I'm going to go for the rectangle selection tool, and I'm going to grab that bottom section, because we want to get rid of that first of all, go to the layer, tap on it and clear, and you can't see it, but you might notice on the thumbnail, the bottom white section has been disappeared, has disappeared off that layer. Then this allows us to go to the transform tool and you can see there's nothing but that now to that layer. All this section has been deleted. You can flip it vertically and you can nudge it down to the section that we want to reflect. Like I say, so this creates quite a nice feature if you want to do a crystal clear surface to your water. Okay, so once we've got that reflection, you might just want to go to the Gaussian Blur, affect the whole layer, just blur it in somewhat, and you can see that it, it pulls away from the edges there. So one way to avoid that is to go to the layer duplicate it and only work on the top layer. So now we can go to the Gaussian Blur, affect that whole layer, just blur it in a bit. So somewhere to about 10% maybe, in fact that's even quite a bit too strong, about 5% perhaps. Let's even add some motion to that. So we'll go to the layer, do our motion to about 20%. And go into our smudge tool with the medium brush, 
turn it down to about 2% and about 80% opacity. And we can just, again, just create some disruption, perhaps in the water. Doesn't need to be too much, just stop it looking quite so glassy, maybe. So I'm going to create another layer, go back to my brushes, I want it on the medium brush, I'm going to go to these darker colour, and I think I'm just going to use it maybe at quite a big size, but low on the opacity, so only about 10% opacity. And I'm just going to allow it to decrease some of the brightness of the reflection, so it's not going to be quite as strong and as illuminated as it is in the actual sky. So I'm just going to bring that down a little bit, just a few notches. Not too much though. Adjustments, Gaussian blur layer. Just soften that into about 20%. It's only a little feature, but it does just decrease the brightness and focus your eye more into the sun and into the sky. And then create another layer. I'm just gonna do a few sun reflections here. So I'm gonna use this bright color. So not the white, but the next one in. Again, on the medium brush, but I'm gonna turn it down so the lower under 2% and we're going to keep it somewhere around the 30% opacity and I'm just going to start bringing in just a hint gradually that this sun is hitting a broken surface so it's getting reflected and fragmented. So I'm trying to keep it in a straight line pretty much down from that point so it can really extend the sun into this lower part. And again soften it, Gaussian blur layer, just soften it in slightly, so that's 3%, just so it's not super sharp, you can always go back in. Add some more, you decide where, how far down you want it to extend. I'm going to go to my yellow, I'm going to put it still at the 2%, massively low down on the opacity, so 4%. I'm just going to bring some of that yellow hint into that area, but just to give it a slightly warming up, but really you won't see those strokes individually particularly. So again, just going to try some of the different colours. I've got this middle colour, medium brush, 2% size, super low on the opacity, about 4%, and I can just bring in some more of these textures just exaggerate here and there. Just create more disruption in the water, not quite so silky smooth. It explains why you get this fragmented texture if you have more fragments in the water elsewhere too. I'm just gonna create a hint that there's some breaks there in the blackness of this bit as well. Okay, I'm gonna leave this particular tutorial here at this point. If you've enjoyed following along, then do make sure to hit the bell notification button, hit the like button on this video, it really helps it out, and I shall catch you back here soon. See you later.